This recording is going to talk about Graham's Law of Diffusion, the fourth objective in our gas loss chapter. Before we begin diving into solving the problems on our practice test B, what I'd like to do is actually take a moment and review some of those important formulas you found uh, that are probably on your test taking tool page. So considering Graham's Law of Diffusion, let's be sure that the following equations are on your tool page, Graham's Law. We understand that the ratio of velocity of a lighter gas compared to a heavier gas, and I know that V represents velocity. So far in our chapter, it has often stood for volume of gas laws, but V is velocity, the speed at which one gas is moving compared to the other. And we're going to denote the letter A, just as we need to assign a variable, to represent the molar mass of a lighter gas compared to gas B, which is a heavier gas for its molar mass. So the speed with which A, gas A, the lighter gas, is moving compared to B is just a ratio. It's quite easily calculated by understanding that it's simply heavy over light square root key in terms of molar mass, where M is the molar mass of each of the gases. Velocity is speed. It is defined as the distance over time. How long did it take to go a certain distance? Lighter gases travel faster than heavier gases. That's my easy way of remembering Graham's Law. The lighter the gas, the faster it travels. As long as the kinetic energy is the same, which is true, as long as the Kelvin temperatures are the same. So all of these equations would be good add-ons if not yet there in your particular equation page for test day. Now let's go back and read a little bit from our practice test B, a question number four. First one says, let's place the following gases in order of increasing average molecular mass. And the temperature is just there to let you know it's all the same. We have carbon dioxide, sulfur pentafluoride, bromine gas, and hydrogen chloride gas. I'm going to do my work actually on the smart board here. So objective four. Question one, we're ranking the speed at which the gases move. Of course, the first thing I would do is consider taking these words and simply putting them into formulas. Carbon dioxide, CO2, versus sulfur pentafluoride, SF5. Bromine gas is a molecular molecule, so Br2, and hydrogen chloride, HCl. We need to sum their molar mass. Carbon, of course, which weighs 12. Oxygen has 16 for its formula weight, giving me a total of 32. So altogether, carbon dioxide, molar mass, 44 grams. Sulfur has an atomic weight of 32. Fluorine weighs 19, but there's five of them in that formula. So we have to add 32 plus 19 times 5 and the molar mass is 127. Bromine has a formula weight of uh, 80. We can just round that, but I know there's two of them, so here we have 160. H weighs 1. Chlorine is 35.5. So here we have a molar mass of 36.5 grams. Who's going to move from slowest to fastest? Clearly it says increasing average speed. Increasing means go slowest to fastest. We want to rank them from heavy to light. The heaviest gas looks like bromine. Next up, SF5. Between next would come carbon dioxide, finally some HCl. So we have the slowest ranked to the fastest 
and that's simply based on the molar mass of those two gases or the four gases there. So with this question it will be identical on your test. You want to find the formulas, add up their weights, bring them from heaviest to lightest and you've ranked them based on how fast they would be traveling. Slower gases move or are the heavier ones, lighter gases move much quicker. Again let's read number two. We want to calculate the ratio velocity of neon to that of chlorine. Again, we're at the same temperature, so erasing chlorine and neon. Chlorine is a molecular compound, Cl2, and neon, of course, is a noble gas, so its formula is simply Ne. Neon has a molar mass of 20.2, chlorine is 35.5, but double that and we'll have our 71 grams for the molecule of chlorine. I understand now that this chlorine, which is heavier, will be called gas B, and neon, which is lighter, is now gas A. The ratio of the lighter gas to the heavier gas is equal to the inverse of the molar mass of heavy over light. So 71 grams of chlorine placed over 20.2 grams of neon. Now how might we hit that on our calculator? With our calculator, I like to just simply hit the square root button, which is actually on top of the squared key. So second function, I have to hit it here. Second function, oh, it's not letting me hit. All right, so this program isn't working. Bear with me. I'll just go use my um, own calculator sitting next to me. But you can see where I'm pointing. I'm just looking at right here, top of the square or the yeah, the x squared. See your your square root, second function square root, and we'll type in the ratio of 71 over 20.2. So hit it with me. Be sure you make your calculator your friend before test day. Square root of 71 divided by 20.2. And how about something like 1.87? Alrighty, so 1.87, the ratio of velocity of the lighter gas to the heavier gas. And so here, simplifying, 1.87. I want to know what that number means. So part of your answer, part of full credit grade will say neon travels 1.87 times faster than chlorine. This is your A plus answer. I demand a sentence so that I know you know what the question is asking. Let's do a read through on our third question. A certain gas suffuses 3.5 times as fast as oxygen. What's the molar mass of the gas? This time we're given the ratio of velocity and asked to solve for one of the molar masses. Here I have oxygen gas and I have some unknown gas. Well molecular oxygen we know has a molar mass of 32. If it's taking a gas three times as long to move at the same distance, it must be heavier. This unknown gas is going to be a heavier gas. It's taking longer to go the same distance. That ratio of velocity has been simplified for us to be 3.5. Its molar mass set over the oxygen molar mass is what we're trying to pull out from our Graham's Law equation. This heavier gas takes three and a half times as long to travel the same distance as little old oxygen molecule. How heavy is that? Well this algebra says I have a square root sign, a radical sign, so I'm gonna I'm gonna just simply square both sides. To get rid of the radical I square both sides. So I have 3.5 squared is now equal to x over 32. Now I'm going to cross multiply and pull out x. 
So the value of 3.5 squared times 32 will pull out x, where x represents the molar mass of our heavier gas. Hit it with me. 3.5 squared times 32. And this darn thing is heavy, isn't it? It's 392 grams. We can't identify it with a formula, but we do know how heavy it is. 3.5 times as long, so it's, it's, it's a much heavier gas. That number makes sense to me. Reading on. You're doing well. We have an effusion experiment taking 90 seconds for a certain number of moles of an unknown to pass through a tiny hole. Under the same set of conditions, the number of moles of oxygen pass through it in 50 seconds. What's the molar mass of the unknown gas? Well, again, this gas is taking much longer to travel the same distance. This unknown gas must be heavier. Gas A will let represent for oxygen. We know oxygen's molar mass is 32 grams. We have this unknown. We don't know its molar mass, but we do know its ratio of time. So let's consider what we know. The ratio of velocity of the lighter gas to the heavier gas, should we just denote this heavier gas as letter B? We don't know its molar mass. I'll say I know it's heavier. Is equal to the inverse of the square root of the molar mass, heavy over light square root key. Looks like we still have quite a few variables to fill in. And this is where the little side note we started with, knowing that velocity is defined as the distance it travels over the time it took. If the distance is exactly the same in this race, and it is, we're going to let velocity be represented by the time it took the oxygen and the unknown gas to make it that same distance. Oxygen, and let's just call that distance 1, and it wouldn't matter, like 1 meter they're traveling. So let's let this distance be represented by 1. And how long did it take for oxygen to travel? It took 50 seconds. There's my velocity for oxygen, the distance divided by time. This unknown gas, we'll call letter B, its velocity, again, the distance is the same. I'm just making up they went one meter. Let's call it one. That's the easiest number to plug in. Gas B took 90 seconds to achieve that same distance. Obviously, oxygen's traveling. It crossed the finish line first. 40 seconds later, gas B crossed the finish line. So let me clean up what we have. We have 1 over 50 set over 1 over 90 equal to our target variable, the mass of our heavier gas, over 32 grams of oxygen. Let's simplify this left-hand side. Find the equivalent value. 1 over 50 divided by 1 over 90. Hit that on your calculator and see if we can't get a common answer. I found 1.8. The ratio of velocity is 1.8. Still looking for the molar mass of the heavier gas, knowing oxygen's weight is 32. How do we get rid of the radical, do you recall? You're right, we're going to square both sides. Squaring both sides, 1.8 squared, cross multiplying by the 32 grams of oxygen is going to pull out the molar mass of B, our heavier gas. Let's hit that. 1.8 squared times the formula weight of oxygen, 32, and I found 103.68 grams. So the molar mass of our unknown gas, 103.68 grams. What's next? One more. Gas A is traveling 30 centimeters in a diffusion tube. In the same time that a different gas, we'll call B, traveled 60 centimeters. Calculate the experimental ratio of their velocity, and what's the lighter gas? 
Well, let's consider a picture to help set this, this uh, race up. So question five. We have a diffusion tube, and I just think of like a piece of glass tubing. Whoop, that's a perfect drawing. I have gas A, and I have gas B. At the very same moment, very same moment, so time is the same. And this is the critical part for experimental error. Time has to be constant. So let's just say I took a Q-tip Q -tip for gas A and a Q-tip for gas B, dunked it into the solutions. All right, gas A, get the Q-tip end wet. Gas B, I get the Q-tip end wet. And I go on your mark, get set, go. And I equally, at the same time, insert those gases. And you know what starts to happen? They diffuse. They diffuse down the tube. Here comes gas A. Here comes gas B until they meet. And when they meet, we see evidence of a chemical change. Gas A traveled 30 centimeters. I should make that look better. Gas A traveled 30 centimeters. So let's suppose here's my gas A. And right here is as far as it made it. From the end of the Q-tip, to where you saw the reaction, 30 centimeters were traveled. And obviously, I'm not the world's best artist, but now I'm trying to show gas B went twice as far. Obviously, my scale is wrong. But from the end of its Q-tip to where they met in the middle, it traveled 60 centimeters. Gas B made it twice as far in the same amount of time. It went faster. The lighter the gas, the faster it traveled. Now remember Graham's law, we're just simply asking for the experimental ratio of velocity. Velocity of gas A over the velocity of gas B, except which one was the lighter gas? The lighter gas went farther. So the lighter gas compared to the heavier gas. And that's a little weird in the way that this problem was set up. But this guy is the lighter gas. It made it further. Since velocity is defined as distance over time, alrighty, time was held constant. So it kind of just drops out, doesn't it? And the velocity is a direct measure of how far they traveled. Gas B traveled 60 centimeters. Gas A traveled 30 centimeters. 60 over 30, the ratio, experimental ratio, is 2. To what? Let's make a sentence so you know what I'm saying. Gas B traveled two times faster than gas A. Now, I want to make a point. If a student were going to make a mistake, here's where I have seen it in years past. Remember this, the ratio of velocity of gas A to gas B is equal to the inverse of the square root of their molar mass. All right, now I know that that's a mouthful to say, but this might be a very good add-on to your test-taking tool page. This is how we calculate an experimental ratio. This is how we calculate the theoretical ratio. See, experimental, some of those um, variables that we can actually measure in a lab are distance with a ruler stick and time with a stopwatch. Distance over time are the variables we can experimentally determine. Molar mass is theoretical. It's using the periodic table that will never change. Every molecule has its own weight, and taking heavy over light square root gives us the theoretical value. Often, students are tempted to square root on this problem and report the square root of two times is faster. But what I'm stressing is just a caution. The left side of our equation, it has no radical, no square root sign. An experimental ratio of velocity is directly measured with distance and time. It's on this side of our equation, when we're calculating a theoretical ratio of velocity, that the square root sign is indeed a factor. I wish you the best of luck getting an A-plus on our test objective.